Hey everybody and welcome back to the introductory astronomy course. This week we're going to go over magnification, specifically magnification within a refracting telescope. So the first thing we need to talk about before we go into magnification are different components of the, uh, the refracting telescope. First up, in the front of the telescope we have our objective lens. Now the objective lens within a refracting telescope is a convex lens, so it's kind of shaped like that. And a convex lens being a positive lens or a converging lens is going to take the incoming light and refract it to its focal point, right? Just like we learned about in previous lectures. Now within the telescope tube, this objective lens is going to refract the light further down the body bend all the light to one specific point, the focal point down the telescope tube. That light is then going to keep kind of going, 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 until it gets to the second part, the eyepiece. And the eyepiece is going to pick that up, back here, and that is also another convex or positive lens or converging lens. It's going to pick up that light beam it into the observer's eye, up there like that. Now, how does this relate to magnification? Well, magnification is determined by the focal length of the objective and the focal length of the eyepiece. And we have a pretty simple equation in order to determine this. The magnification of a telescope, or a refracting, or a refracting telescope, is equal to the focal length of the objective over the focal length of the eyepiece. All right, so for instance, the Vivitar telescopes, they have between 60 and 120 times magnification, depending on the eyepiece that you use in the back. Now, before we get into the actual uh, procedure of the lab, we should also talk about one more component that's important uh, to using a telescope to collect data. Uh, the first is magnification, all right? Magnification is you enlarge the size of an image. So, I mean, you guys probably all know what magnification is, but if you have a star that's far away and you look at it through a telescope, it's going to magnify the image, make it much bigger than it was before. The other important quantity of a telescope, and this is probably arguably more important than the magnification itself, is the angular resolution of the telescope. So, just let's go back to using our star, for example. You have a tiny star here, right? And you magnify it. It doesn't do much good if it turns out very blurry, right? So the resolution of the image, the ability to kind of resolve or determine the different components of the image is very important. And how we measure that within a telescope is we use something called angular resolution, where it allows us to see the difference between two very distant objects. So if you have two very far away stars, okay? I'll well, just draw them like that. All right, and you're, you're down here, and here's your eye on Earth, and you're looking at them. Let's say that this angle is 200 arc seconds, okay? So a very tiny angle. In there, we'll call that theta. If your telescope only has an angular resolution, 300 arc seconds, then you're not going to be able to tell the difference between these two stars. But if it has a resolution of 100 arc seconds, then you'll be able to see the two stars. Essentially, the angular resolution is just the smallest angle that the telescope can see between two objects without them becoming blurred. If it's uh, if the angle is lower than your than your angular resolution, you're going to get a very all right, so how does that apply to this lab? Well, we can't take apart our telescope and kind of look at the objective to determine the magnification. We don't want to do that. We wouldn't be able to use our telescope anymore. So we've come up with a, a lab experiment for you that can kind of replicate that. Now, it's just an approximation. It's not going to be 100% correct. But what you want to do is you want to take an object, sort of maybe 
this big or so. We'll use this one, my little Kalabi Yao 3D printed manifold, for example. Now what you want to do is, just like in the telescope lab, take your telescope and you want to move further there, back enough, far back enough away, that you can zoom in on your object and still see the entire object. It should just be magnified. Like, you don't want to zoom up so close that you just see one portion of it, and you don't want to um, be so far away that you can't really tell the difference. You just want to see it kind of zoom up enough so that you're able to see it closer. So, when you first use your telescope, you want to be back enough so that you get that magnified image. So, if you're here, all right, here's your initial distance, all right? And here's your object. Let's say, no, oh, I don't know. Let's just draw a square. Because I'm not that good at this. All right, this is your initial distance. Okay, that's di. All right. Once you get that magnified image, you want to kind of remember the size that it looked like in the telescope. It's just an approximation, so just kind of remember the approximate size. And you want to move forward until the object looks about the same as it did in the telescope. So keep going, keep going, keep going until you get close enough to that object where it looks about the same. And then you want to measure that distance. And that's your final distance. Okay? We can approximate the magnification of the telescope by saying the initial distance divided by the final distance. And that will give us our magnification. In our telescope, it should be between 60 to 120 times uh, magnification. Now, once you've done that, there are some questions in the lab assessment for you to answer um, and just some other different things with the assessment to take care of. All right, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email, and good luck, guys.